The Book of True Life, Volume 10, Teaching 281. 1. My beloved disciples, although many religions exist, there is only one law and only one doctrine. My teaching is the doctrine of the Spirit, which teaches man to practice deeds of love. Although humanity calls itself Christian, what has it done with my doctrine? It has created rituals, ceremonies, and prayers that lack feeling and sincerity, thus hiding its hypocrisy behind them. I say to you that love is the only truth. If you do not practice deeds of love, you will not be following the true path, even if you praise and glorify my name with words and songs. Truth is the divine love manifested throughout the universe. The individuals who does not know the truth, does not know God. Man is greatly mistaken when he believes he can attain the divine truth through religious rituals and ceremonies. God is not what man has created on earth. God is infinite and he is essence and omnipotent. It is necessary for you to be loving, just and virtuous in order to feel the presence of God, to know him and to be like him. When I speak in this manner, you are unable to imagine the materialistic nations of earth comprehending and accepting this doctrine of love. However, I say to you that my teaching is the seed that the world needs. It is the water that man needs to quench his inner thirst. Man is hungry and thirsty because he lacks love and truth in his life. The spiritual and moral misery that man is experiencing are the product of his wars, his material ambitions, and lack of brotherhood. At times, when men tire of fighting, suffering, and destroying one another, they will attempt to seek the path of salvation that I have revealed in the past. Although they seek different ways to interpret my doctrine, they continue to practice rituals that are materialistic and meaningless. The spirit of man has not been able to proclaim its freedom because its dense darkness surrounds it. However, my light is so powerful that it can penetrate that darkness and reach the most sensitive part of man. What is that light? It is my new teaching and doctrine with its new revelations. This doctrine comes to teach man the true way to worship God and how to find the pure water that will quench his spiritual thirst. I will inspire everyone to worship God and to live his life according to the divine law. This is what the Lord truly wants from his children. O oh, humanity, man will finally know the truth and essence of my word. He will discover that my doctrine is not only the divine voice that speaks to humanity, but also the expression of all spirits. My word is the inner voice that inspires you so that you may achieve salvation and spiritual freedom. My doctrine is free of all rituals so that its essence can endure. During this time, I have come to bring you a teaching that is pure and perfect. Thus, I say to you that at the end of your journey on earth, I will accept only the true deeds of love that you practice because it will demonstrate that you knew the truth. Man has never lacked my revelation of spiritual enlightenment. However, he has been afraid to analyze them. I say to you, what can you know about the truth and the eternal if you continue to disregard the spiritual? Behold how you gave material interpretations to my revelations during the first and second eras, when they were truly spiritual and divine. You confuse things that are material with things that are spiritual, lacking the respect you change those things that are profound and elevated into things that are superficial and not elevated. Why have you chosen to do that? You have done that because you want to interpret the doctrine of God according to your material life and what is more beneficial to you. Disciples, carefully analyze what I have told you. Thus, when you say you are a spiritualist, it is because you are able to prove it with your deeds. It is easy to say that one is a spiritualist, but it is truly difficult to be one. There are many who listen to my word and who proclaim they know how to analyze my doctrine. However, they are not my disciples because they do not truly practice my doctrine, which tells you to love one another. Behold, 
how easily an individual changes his life when he makes a small effort to practice my doctrine. Throughout his life, that individual had told me that he loved me through verbal prayers created by others. Although he prayed, he did not truly comprehend those prayers nor understand the meaning of the words. When he set aside his old habits of praying and started to pray deep within the spirit, elevating his thoughts to God, he began to feel the presence of God for the first time. He did not know what to say to the Lord and began to weep and shed tears. He thought to himself, Father, what can I tell you if I do not know how to pray to you? However, amidst that confusion, tears and inner joy, he was truly communicating with the Father. That language was more beneficial than all other languages that are spoken on earth or that are written in books. Those first words uttered by an individual who when he begins to pray spiritually to the Lord are similar to the first words uttered by a young infant, whose words greatly delight the parents as they hear the first expressions of their young infant as he begins his life on earth. Man has not been able to correctly interpret the revelations that I gave him in the past. Therefore, today I have come in spirit to clearly define and interpret those previous revelations. During this period, you will not only become familiar with the gifts and abilities of your spirit, but also those of the material body. Thus, you will not confuse one with the other. 27. Your spirit, mind, and emotions will learn to be in true harmony when my doctrine, as the light of a new day, comes to awaken a sleeping humanity. Those of you witnessing my teaching today are asking me to help you achieve peace and unity within your heart. You present yourselves before me as a single being who is fully aware of what he will witness today as he listens to my teaching through human spokesmen. I welcome your spirit. Everything that you offer me in your prayers and practices that is pure and simple, I accept as a just tribute of the children toward their celestial father. Your most passionate request is for peace on earth and for men to live today as did the patriarchs in the past. I say to you that peace will return to earth when you, my disciples, have laid the foundation for a new world. I am now preparing you to carry out that mission. The beginning of that new period will appear when you are able to perceive each human being as your brother, when you disregard all the differences that exist between people, and when you love me by loving each one of your brethren. Man will then experience a joyful life on earth, and I will be acknowledged as the Divine Father. My word during this period is the same one that the Messiah gave you. It is the same pure water that bathed your spirit when you followed me through the land of Palestine. You are familiar with the essence of my word and are able to recognize it because it has remained engraved in your spirit. Today, as I descend to manifest myself through these men and women, you recognize that it is the Divine Father who speaks as you listen to them. You ask, why did I not select another form to give my message of this time to humanity? You say to me that there are no humans on earth who are pure and virtuous and capable of serving me. Moses, Peter, John, and the prophets from the first era are no longer on earth. However, truly I tell you that I have sent virtuous spirits to earth during all eras, and among those are the human spokesmen who have humbly served me during this period. Offer your comfort and love to the spokesmen because they have a great responsibility. I have nurtured their hearts and minds like a pure fountain, although at times pain has been the best means to purify them. Their lives has been very similar to those of my messengers in the past eras. I bless them. Blessed are those who have followed me through the path and who have recognized the importance of the mission that I have assigned to them. I invite you to enter into the kingdom. Although I am summoning all nations, I know that not everyone will listen. Humanity has extinguished its lamps and walks in darkness. In those places where there is darkness and confusion, one of my enlightened messengers will arise to enlighten his brethren. 
That messenger is a spiritual guardian who is alert and awaiting my signal to awaken his brethren. Allow the love of those messengers to become a seed in your heart that will produce fruits. Do not reject them if they present themselves before you and are materially poor. Listen to them because they are going to grant you an unknown power in my name. They will teach you the perfect way to pray and will free you from all materialism which has previously enslaved you. They will help you to attain spiritual freedom, allowing you to elevate towards me. Those who are listening to me are anxiously awaiting the fulfillment of my words. You yearn to see humanity converted into my disciples. Also, you ask that you be among those whom I will send to distant lands to fulfill a difficult mission. Truly, I tell you that you will need to prepare yourselves because the battle that awaits you will be great. The messengers whom I will send are not all found among those who have witnessed my manifestations through the human spokesman. Many of my messengers will speak through intuition because I have prepared their spirits. I have wisely placed those messengers in different parts of the world so that my spiritual enlightenment will reach all places. Although I have come to manifest myself to this nation, how can you believe that I would disregard other countries on earth? If all beings are my children, can any being be distant or separate from me if my spirit is present throughout the universe and comprehends all things that have been created? All things live and nourish themselves from me. My universal ray of spiritual enlightenment has descended throughout the world to all spirits on earth and throughout the universe because I have come to save all of my children. I do not want you to waste this period nor journey through the earth without leaving your footsteps for others to follow. I want you to be true sowers of my seed now and when you depart from this earth until the seeds you have sown in the hearts of your brethren begin to blossom. I have not come to force you to follow my mandates. Rather, I only inspire you with my love to follow them because I will only accept those deeds that you fulfill as a result of becoming spiritually prepared through my teaching. Be free within my laws, but always practice obedience. Fulfill both spiritual and material laws because they both originate from me and form, in essence, only one law. Pray for all beings. Pray that they all comprehend God and live in harmony with him. Elevate your prayers like a song, a passionate hymn that will illuminate all spirits and signal the path toward the end of their destiny. My people, you have been brought to these houses of prayer through the strengths of my word. You have not come to these houses to seek my presence nor to tell me about your concerns because you know that I am present everywhere and that I can listen to you wherever you are. 40. You have come because of my word. You are seeking the divine essence of my word, which nourishes your spirit. You are aware that I have designated the moment in which I will cease to manifest myself in this moment. That is why you are quick to come each time that I manifest myself through the human spokesman. You want to cherish in your spirit all of the revelations that I have given you. Your intuition is now making you aware of the spiritual mission that you come to fulfill on earth. You are now becoming aware of your responsibility because you now comprehend the importance of spreading my divine law through your deeds, words, and thoughts. Soon you will remain without my teachings manifested through the human spokesman, but you will not weaken it if you follow the example set by my disciples in the second era. After the divine master departed, they united to give one another strength, inspiration, courage, and faith. You need to unite so that you will feel my presence in your reunions and learn from my divine teachings. Today, you have rejoiced listening to my teaching and tomorrow you will experience greater joy as you study my teachings. When you carefully study them and penetrate into the true essence, you will become astonished as you discover the divine inspiration in each of my teachings. Today, I bless those who tomorrow will unite and prepare themselves to analyze the doctrine that I have brought.
through the study and analysis, through that study and analysis, those disciples will discover the true interpretation of my word. I say to you that just like my word radiates divine enlightenment so that your interpretation illuminate the path of your brethren, those who interpret this doctrine correctly will illuminate their brethren who previously lacked spiritual enlightenment because of their routine practices and rituals. They will be able to save them from their confusion caused by the lack of meditation. This multitude who witnessed my manifestation will eventually spread through the world offering testimony of what is witnessed. It will not only clearly explain my law and the doctrine that I revealed during this era, but also all that I have revealed throughout the eras. Do not fear being rejected nor ridiculed by your brethren. 49. I assure you that when this multitude of spiritualists arises among humanity, I will have already given many great spiritual manifestations to mankind. Those manifestations will make the ones who awaited me spiritually realize that I had come already. Do you not believe that when they see you arise and listen to your testimony, they will recognize that you are my messengers? Truly, I tell you that even the theologians will become aware of the reasons for this spiritual manifestation. This multitude will spread throughout the world like a great army. My spirit will inspire it in its battle so that all of my prophecies will be fulfilled. Why do you weep when you think of those days when you will no longer be able to listen to my word? Do not fear, my people, for I will not leave you alone. Recall that during the second era, Mary remained among my apostles after I departed. Mary, who gently offers advice and comfort to those who are sad, remained among those disciples for a time. The disciples were bitterly disappointed when the Messiah was crucified on Golgotha and they could no longer receive his teachings. But once their sorrow and bitterness left their hearts, they were able to understand their mission. It was then that they began to spread the good news. The Lord also took Mary from this earth, but her tenderness remained as a heritage to all of humanity. Those of you who are the new disciples of this divine teachings believe that you will be alone when the manifestation comes to an end. However, I say to you that your divine mother will help you in your ordeals. And when you no longer are able to feel my presence, even though I will be closer to you than ever before, her tenderness will help you feel stronger and comprehend the true meaning of the teachings that I have revealed to you with words and deeds. You will be soldiers of my law and will sow spirituality, but spirituality will not be governed on earth nor have a representative in a human. Your only guide will be the Messiah who will guide you through your conscience. My new workers will be revealed to you through your intuition. Man is unable to assign a task nor a mission to another spirit. I am the only one who can assign you a mission endow you with spiritual gifts and determine the destiny of each being. I tell you this so that you will not fall into rituals nor false practices which lack truth. You will be my sowers, my prophets, and my messengers. Only the Lord determines the divine destiny of each being. It is my will that complete harmony and brotherhood be practiced among the multitude so that no one will arise as Lord, King, or Tyrant. This multitude should only be guided by love, harmony, and spirituality. If you practice all these that I tell you, you will set an example for others to follow and pave the path for spirituality. The spiritual enlightenment one obtains from my teachers will reveal the uselessness of idols and will remove the arrogant from their thrones. It will also destroy the temporary kingdom of materialism. This multitude that I am preparing today to teach humanity about spirituality will not be wealthy nor possess any material riches. It will demonstrate to the world that the truth, love, and justice of God do not need material riches from the earth. Love, faith, and strong determination will be the forces that you will use to reveal the doctrine of humanity.
Remember the example set by the Messiah and his disciples. Meditate on these lives and on the teachings they gave to others, and you will see that they spoke the truth. My hand has never touched a coin. When on a certain occasion I was intentionally shown a coin and asked what responsibility one had towards Caesar, I observed the coin without touching it and responded, Give to God those things that belong to God and to Caesar those things that belong to Caesar. This is one of my last teachings. I will continue to give you my teachings for a short while longer, and then I will cease to manifest myself through the human spokesman. After I depart, I will grant you a period of tranquility. During that period, spirits will begin to develop a gift of intuition in different forms. During those days of spiritual meditation, you will comprehend all those things that today you are unable to comprehend. Also, I will separate you with new revelations and prophecies. The inspiration received by one individual will be confirmed by another, and thus there will be no doubt among the disciples. Roja Rojas and Damiano Aviedo were my first human spokesmen for my spiritual communication during this period. Elijah manifested himself through Roque Rojas, and the Divine Master first manifested himself through Damiano Aviedo. In that manner, I wish to demonstrate that among my apostles, both the male and the female sit at my table. The spirit is the same in both the male and the female. During this third era, when I have come seeking spirits, why would I differentiate between them? 72. Rohe Rojas and Damiano Aviedo are your forerunners during this period. They heard the divine voice in the middle of the desert and never doubted nor questioned its truthfulness. One of them listened to the voice of the prophet and the others felt the charity of the divine master. I have given you many revelations since then. The first human spokesman came and departed, but were followed by others. Although many were highly devoted, faithful in truth, the others sacrificed it. Not all of them had pure intentions. Some have been vain, desiring praise and material rewards. From the beginning, I have taught these multitudes how to recognize the true fruit. I say to those who are now listening to my word that you will nourish your brethren with my truth. You will destroy those things that are false with the truth of my word. I must say to you that you never took care of the human spokesman because you are lacking in comprehension and charity toward them. Although you fail to take care of the spokesman, you must take care of my word, which flowed through their lips. My word is the new manna. When the spiritualists multiply upon the earth, there will be many who will confuse them with fortune tellers. They will be asked to foretell the future. Scientists will ask them about the spiritual life and about life on other planets. I tell you these things so that when you find yourself being questioned by those individuals, you will remember to pray so that your responses will be inspired by the Father. Thus, you will respond according to what the Father wants you to reveal based on the needs and questions of your brethren. I ask you to not change any of the revelations that I have given you, nor attempt to scrutinize those things that I have not yet revealed. Always remain spiritually prepared. Thus, you will be as a fountain that offers pure water to those who thirst for spiritual enlightenment. It will not be your hand that removes the veil that conceals those things that are mysterious. Was there perhaps someone on earth who was worthy of opening a book of seven seals? Only the Lamb of God was worthy, and only he had the power to open that book. There are many teachings that will be revealed to man while he is on earth. However, there are many others that will be revealed to him only when he dwells in the elevated mansion of the Spirit. You will find me everywhere. Because my presence is always with you along the road. I am like an oasis in the middle of the desert or a beacon of light amidst a stormy night. My peace be with you. 
The Book of True Life teaches that the Divine Master teaching 281. Love each other.